Uh, my message today, nothing is new under the sun. It's taken out of Ecclesiastes 1, and it's verse 9, if I remember correctly. And, and studying this this time, I, I've read this before. I've never preached on it, but, but I, I had... I, I, I tell people all the time that, that you can preach something, you can read something, and today it means one thing to you, the way God speaks to your heart. Tomorrow, God will take that same passage and speak to your heart a little differently. And, and I believe that the reason that it spoke to me differently is because of all that's going on in the world. And that's really the reason I looked up that passage, was nothing is new under the sun. That's how God works in our lives. He gives us what we need when we need it. If we'll just turn to Him, trust Him, He'll always give us what we need at the time that we need it. In our world today, it's easy to get tripped up. Anybody disagree? We said it Wednesday night, and, and, and Sam corrected me. I get mad. Well, I'm not supposed to get mad. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. But I get so tripped up with all the garbage that's going on in our world today that sometimes I lose focus of God still in control. God is control in control of everything. He just allows us, He allows us free will to mess up. Now, when we mess up, generally, it helps us grow stronger when we come back. All the corruption. What's wrong is right, and what's right is wrong in today's world. Many churches today don't take a stand for God. Um, I hear of a new one every day of a church that's just washed up. Now, that's not saying all of them, so please don't say that I'm sitting up here preaching that we're the only ones right because there's a lot of churches out there that are doing what's right. But there's a lot of them that are following the world. I spoke uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, a month ago maybe, about a a Christian group that has put cuss words in their songs to attract more people. Well, if you have to become the world to be, it says you're, you're in the world but not of the world. If you become the world, you're not doing what God's called you to do. But when we stand on God's word, we don't love we're legalistic. We don't bend. Well, there's a difference in bending on the truth and loving. We have to love all people, regardless of where they're at. But uh, nothing new under the sun. We all think we're coming up with a whole list of new problems. I know we got drug problems now. I know there's other problems, but I believe in the uh, Bible all the way through it talks about the problems of the world. The real problem is, is we forgot to trust God completely. We trust Him as far as we want to. We don't surrender all. We surrender what's comfortable to us. My hope today is when I get through that in some regards you'll be more sold out to Jesus. That you will understand more what God expects us to do and start living that life. Slide one. Are you worried? Now this is an interesting passage because the very first of this first verse of this passage, and, and I didn't write the very first word, very first verse, even though I put it up on my slide, it says, 
from the words of a preacher of David. <laughs> okay? If you read the very first verse of that, uh, that, that chapter, uh, Ecclesiastes 1, verse 1. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all this vanity. What advantage does a man have in all his work? which he does under the sun. A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. Also the sun rises and the sun sets and hastens to its place and rises again, blowing toward the south, then turning toward the north. The wind continues, swirling along, and on the circular courses the wind returns. All the rivers flow into the sea, yet the sea is not full to the place where the rivers flow. There they flow again. Now, we say right now our rivers have been full. <laughs> you know, there's been flooding everywhere. But, but you know, we, we have to look at that. The, the point to this is, is the world is in a cycle. Life is in a cycle. We, are, we worry about things. We forget God's in control. I, I catch myself with the, in the political world worrying about what's going to happen next. But then I have to think, I, I have to remind myself that God's in control. If we get someone that I don't want in the office, God's still in control. He put us there to correct us, maybe. I know bad things happen to good people. But where's your trust in God when that happens? This young lady, Tracy, that was killed this past week. A year ago, uh, this family left the church. In the last couple of months, they returned back to the church. She was killed tragically. A tree fell on her car as she was driving home for work. Troy, the one that I know well, has missed every day of work this week, this past week. He owns his own business. He owns a chicken farm. Not only does he own a chicken farm, but he owns a chicken farm that has eggs. They gather eggs. So when you own a business, and a chicken farm usually only has family people working in it. And so what do you do with your business? Your daughter is laying in the hospital at the point of death. Why do good things happen to bad? Uh, why do bad things happen to good people? Well, God showed up. One of the members of his church owns another chicken farm. He don't do eggs, but he has a chicken farm. Well, I don't know if you're familiar with chicken farms, but they take the chickens out every so often, and then they have to do a cleaning. They have to do all this stuff, and there's about a six-week period that there's no chickens at the chicken farm. Guess what? There was no chickens at the chicken farm. So this other man brought all his crew over and they ran Troy's chicken farm for a whole week. God showed up. God didn't let his business suffer. The way I understood it is not only did they come, they volunteered to come and they took care of his business. God's in control. We just have to recognize that. We have to know that in our hearts. But most of the time, we only think of God being in control when things are going good in our life. Everything's going good. God has a plan. Do we always walk in it? Troy wasn't walking in it six months ago. Maybe you weren't walking in it in the last month, in the last two months. 
But God has a plan for your life and He uses the plan to keep us attached or to draw us back. The verse, vanities of vanities. <laughs> I looked that up because I, I had a totally different thought process. Vanities of vanities. <laughs> we are so conceited. That's what it's saying. We're just a conceited group of people. We're all about me. We're all about us. We're all about the church. We're all about us. We're conceited. <laughs> we know it all. Do you ever know somebody that knows it all? Knows everything? It's okay to know a lot. Okay? It's okay to know a lot, but if you're putting everybody else down while you know it, that's not okay. And, and we all know people like that. We ran into somebody yesterday who was talking about someone that just that knows his Bible, knows his Bible, and Debbie bit, bit her tongue. She says, but does she know, does he know the other language that this guy knows? And even useless in her actions. When we become that person that we know it all, that nobody knows it like us, we're useless. Because nobody wants to associate with you. Nobody wants to do anything with you. Uh, the next part of this passage says, advantage to work. They were working for small gain. They were only working for self. Do we know the world today for people that only work for self? What can I get out of it? How much money can I put in the bank? How many cars can I have? How many boats can I have? How many of this can I have? Oh, no, I, I can't go to church. i got to work. Now, I'm not talking about people that are on schedules to have to work. I'm talking about me that would take that overtime, 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 because on Sundays it pays double time to work, to put more in my pocket, to put more in the bank, and then I always covered up with, well, God, I just do so much money with my, I do so much with my money. It's not only a livelihood, but it's whole activity in life. That's what this passage is talking about. It gets down to the next part of it. It says generations and earth. Life is an endless cycle. Yes, we die. But if you're a Christian, it's an endless cycle. Okay? But life, when we're dead and gone, somebody comes right in behind us. It's generational. Life is just life just keeps going on. But life doesn't bring you security. It doesn't bring you happiness. Yes. I'm happy I've got grandkids. Okay? But my happiness is, is trying to make sure that those grandkids grow up to love God and surrender to God and all that. But life is not like that for a lot of people. Security or meaning of lives. Life passes on. What are we passing on? What in your life are you passing on? Are you passing on your wealth? Jesus comes back, it's just going to die. It's going to burn. You've never seen a U-Haul behind a, a hearse. What are you passing on? Now, do we need to help? Yes. I think everybody in here has helped their kids at one time or another. <laughs> Probably more than one time or another by the faces I'm seeing. Okay? We're supposed to. But at some point, they got to grow up and stand on their own two feet. Look at our generation. What have we passed on? Have we passed on the security of a believer? I think of Jenna. Okay? Mom and Dad didn't go to church for a long time. Jenna's in church now. Of course, she has to bounce back and forth. But 
maybe a year ago, she walked down this aisle and got saved. Wanted to get saved. I think we talked about it before, but she walked down this aisle and professed her salvation and wanted to be baptized. Okay? That's generational that y'all are part of. You bring up a child in the way she goes. When he's old, he won't depart from it. At the end of that, it says the sun rises and blows and returns. Rivers flow and continue again. And I wrote here, it's not. it just happens over and over. Some things are just going to happen over and over and over. There's nothing that we can do to stop it. There's nothing that we can do to change it. It just happens. That's the circular part of life. The second part, verses 8 through 11, says, I put, things never seem to change. All the things are wearisome. Man is not able to tell it. The eye is not satisfied we, uh, with seeing, nor is the ear filled with hearing. That which has been is that which will be, and that which has been done is that which will be done. Past, present, and future. So, there is nothing new under the sun. In other words, man's not able to tell it. Man, you know, and I think of our history today. And I'm not getting political, and maybe I should. But the fact that we have a society of people that are trying to erase history, okay? A society of people that... <laughs> in leadership that already don't know history, let alone God's Word. Think about it. That's where our society's gone. Is there anything which one might say? See, this is all new. <laughs> we, 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 right now, we think everything that we're talking about in Society is something that's, that's newly created. Something that, that's never happened before. That's, that's, that's where our younger generation's at. And maybe some of the generation that's sitting right here right now. That's where society's become. I lost my slide. Already it has existed for ages, which were before us. All this stuff's already been going on. There is no remembrance of earlier things, and also the, the latter things, which will occur. There will be for them no remembrance among those who will come later still. Things that we talk about right now, things that we... Even in the Bible, future generations will not study the Bible. Future, I wrote in my notes. I'm getting off my notes because I'm watching the time, okay? But we used to, when my kids were younger, Daddy would get home from work. It was, it was great. Daddy would get home from work. My girls would meet me with my house shoes and a glass of tea. They were in the kitchen cooking supper, getting supper ready. We got through, they got through with supper, and we all went to the table together and sat down and ate lunch or dinner. Very few households now eat dinner together. Very few households today, if they in the same room eating dinner, 
I, it's, I don't, it's down there. Cell phone. I got mad five, six, seven years ago when my wife and my daughter with me sitting in the room were carrying on a conversation with each other on their texting of their cell phone. Now what does that accomplish? There's no verbal. I know y'all do it too, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I, last night, last night I sent Debbie a message and I said, I need this instead of hollering, okay? I need this. Where's communication gone? We don't communicate with each other anymore. Well, that's coming. That is coming. Worrisome. Worrisome is, the, the, I looked that up, it says, I'm not able to tell it, but it's not satisfying. I'm not satisfied. I'm not listening. Profitless. All this stuff is, is what's in these verses. It's, it's I, I'm, I'm just... I wrote here, and I started this several years ago. It's the dash we live in. It's the dash we live in. Because life is so short, and we're trying so hard to accomplish so much. When God does, I don't think God wants us to accomplish that much. I think God's worried about what we accomplish at home what we accomplish for Him, what we accomplish in ministry. You say, well, I'm not in ministry. Yeah, you are. If you call yourself a Christian, you're in ministry. But yet we get so sucked into doing everything else. Why? Man is never satisfied. Richest man in the world was asked, how much is enough? One more dollar. You know, if you're the richest man in the world, why do you need one more dollar? Because he's not satisfied. The end of that verse says, man has been, man will be, he'll be has been again. And then he'll be done. That's life. That's that little dash I'm talking about. Nothing new. The world exists in cycles. Good and bad. The flooding last week was bad. Churches called off services because of the flooding expected. And I'm not criticizing because they thought they were bad. Okay? There are churches or there are places in Nashville... Uh, Wednesday, they were still underwater. I don't know if they still are or not. Interstate 24, I believe, is still closed from a mudslide. Things happen, good and bad. 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 40 years from now, the next generation, unless they read it because there's another flood, they won't know anything about this flood. They won't know anything about the mudslide. In fact, they're going to be riding around in, in uh, cars without gasoline. You know, the ones that are pulled by horses. No, you can't, pull, you can't do horses anymore because that emits gas. The Green New Deal. Nothing will be rem remembered. Do you wonder why history repeats itself? <laughs> I think it's because of reminders. We need to, rem be remem we need to remember who God is. I put, think of our world today. I believe it not only repeats itself, but I believe it gets worse. The things that we face today, they're the same thing, but they're worse. And the one that I think about more than anything else is the drug epidemic. Drug epidemic. Sure, there were drugs back then. Different scale. But they were there. But where does that come in? The world is godless. 
the world despises God. No, we don't. But the world does. There's no fear. There's no fear of God. There's no fear of the law. There's no fear of anything in today's society. Just do it. You know, that was a Nike thing, but think about how it is now. There's no commitment. There's no commitment in today's society. You can't hardly get people to show up for work, let alone show up for church. We're vile. We're inconsiderate. We're an inconsiderate generation. Not, not, and please, I, I'm, I'm saying on the outside, I believe that our church, but, but maybe we need to reflect. Maybe we need to think about. Maybe we need to share our faith a little more. You hear that down at the it, last of this. See all of this? All the stuff that's new, all the stuff that's going on, all the stuff that's going on in our society today. It's not new. It's just history repeating itself. No memory. We seem to forget we are taking history out of the schools. We've taken the Bible out of the schools. We've taken prayer out of the schools. And even the home. I had, there's a requirement with my employees, and they don't even start anymore. There's a requirement in my home that when you sit down to eat, you bless your food before you eat. You thank God for it. Okay? I had to remind my grandson the other day. My grandson says he's a Christian. I believe him. He's living a good life. But he has no prayer life. We have to remind people just the simple thing. You know, and, and Sam, I'm going to be honest right here, right now on it. You did the 8 o'clock thing last week. You announced it, and I determined I was going to do it. I didn't do it a single day this week. Because I forgot, because I forgot to put it in my phone as a reminder, okay? And I didn't do it a single time. You know when I thought about it? Last night when I got to this point right here in my message. Think about it. We have no dedication to anything but self. And I'm the preacher. We get wrapped up in society. We get wrapped up in the garbage. I put there too, we don't even talk, we, we don't even talk at the dinner table anymore. We're consumed with electronics. I fought this battle the first time I ever saw a preacher take this to the pulpit. I got mad. Okay? But it helps me to stay on track. It helps me to... Why? Because I can read my writing for one thing. Okay? Because there's so much information I can put on here, and if I need to skip it, I can skip it. We're consumed. Let's take a look back. Next slide. God was there. Adam and Eve. God's most prized possession. God gave them a law. God gave them a rule. You can do anything here. You can have anything here, but... Who showed up? The devil. And the devil showed up and tripped them up and we are paying the price today because they ate of that fruit. Now, was it an apple? Was it an orange? Nobody knows what it was. And we've had debates over what the fruit was. Well, you shouldn't eat an apple. An apple a day keeps the doctor away is what I've always been told. Okay? But, but think about it. We've tied up. We've, we've done so many things. Next. Noah's Ark. The Bible says that Noah, I'm going to jump down here. 
the earth was filled with violence and corruption. And 2 Peter 2.5 says that Noah preached. That's going back in time. Genesis 6.3 says, my, share, my spirit shall not strive with man forever. His day shall be 120 years. Some believe, and there's been big controversies on this within a church, within the churches. My spirit will not stay for, for but 120 years. I can't quote it. His day shall be 120 years. Some people believe, and I tend to agree, but I'm not going to, like Ron said this morning, this is my opinion. Some people believe that Noah preached for 120 years because the Bible says that at the end of that 120 years, all those people were going to be dead. So I believe Noah preached for 120 years. How many people got on the ark with Noah? Noah, his wife, three sons, and his wives. That's all. And then the animals. Noah, if Noah preached 120 years and had zero conversions, what was happening? Because we are a ruthless society that has turned our back on God. But then what happened? Noah, and I'm not beating him up, I'm just telling you scripture. Noah got off the boat, off the ark, and got drunk. And, and stripped naked. See, Noah even had a failure, but yet we know that Noah was a part of the history that saved the world as it was known, his family. Tower of Babel. What, what was the whole purpose of the Tower of Babel? This happened right after Noah's Ark. Right after. The kids grew up. They, I mean, everything has happened, and the Tower of Babel was being sent, being built. Now, one translation says that we will build our tower to reach to God. Others say to reach to the heavens. What do we do today? We just keep building them bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And God confused their language. Why? Because from the day of Noah until the Tower of Babel, they had turned back to a pagan god. How soon do we forget? And they were reaching to the gods. That's what their plan was. They were pagan. They had turned back to be pagans. Not all, but some. Sodom and Gomorrah. We all know about Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was a sexually filled city. Homosexuality. Incest. Uh, pedophilia. I can't even say the word. Sexually filled. Nothing's new under the sun. And what did God do? He destroyed it. We might be destroyed. Why? Because they had left God. They had turned their back on God. And then Lot's wife turned around and looked. Why did she turn around and look? I don't think she was looking to see the fire. I think she was depressed that she had to leave her home. Now, that, again, that's my, my opinion. Why? Because she had gotten used to the lifestyle. Whether she was a part of it 
or just observing it. We talked about that this morning, I think, in Sunday school. It's, it's like we, we do something or we subtly do something and then before you know, you're completely wrapped up in it. Completely wrapped up. Things that are against God's will. It's subtle. But Satan knows how to attract us. David, we all know the story about David. Second uh, Samuel 11. David had victory after victory, but he slipped into adultery. Not only adultery, but murder. Elijah. This is 1 Kings 19. After God had used Elijah over and over and over and over, Elijah got afraid that God wouldn't take care of him. He quit trusting God. And the Bible says that he fled for his life. Do we do the same thing? Do we run because we're uncomfortable? Do we not stand because it might cause embarrassment? Do we not stand because somebody might challenge us? I just don't know what to say. Well, if you read God's Word, if you pray, and you trust Him, God will put words in your mouth and will surprise you with it. I've been there. I bet y'all have and some of you others have too. God will fill your heart and your mouth with just things that you forgot that you knew. This message, in this passage today, I probably read it 25 years ago. But when I got ready to write this message, that, ter that word, nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. Just kept coming in and coming in and coming in. I started reading it and I started remembering some of this stuff. Now next week, not next week, because I don't know when I'm going to preach it, but the next one of the messages I'm going to preach in here is about the depravity of life. Because I can remember it from when, probably when I was going to Adrian Rogers Church. Probably when I heard that. So that's, that's been more than 25 years. It's been 35 years. <clears throat> History repeats itself. Next slide. History repeats itself. I wrote here, the Roman Empire. Now this is bringing it home. What, what uh, country right now has is, is gone socialist? Australia? The one that's on the news every day. Venezuela. But the leadership is, and they're trying to get out, but the leadership won't let them out. Okay? There are other countries that we study. And, and there again, nothing's new under the sun. I don't remember them. I remember talking about them when I was a kid. But I don't remember them anymore. The Roman Empire, others, America. But realize this, in the last days, difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, Disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, concealed, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding on to a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, I'm sorry, that was King James. <coughs> Avoid such men of these, for among them are those who enter into households of captive women, weighed down with sins, led by the various impulses, always learning and never able to come to truth. Just as Janus and Jambres 
opposed Moses. Think about it. These people opposed Moses. And who's Moses today? Or who is Moses in the Bible? Also, and, and these men also opposed the truth. Men who deprived with of deprived mind, rejected in regard of faith, but the they supposed to be they, not the. <coughs> but they will not make progress, for their folly will be obvious to all, just as Janice and Jamboree also. And I didn't write all those down. But what's harmful in society today? What's harmful in the church? Gossip, no self-control, a form of godliness. People that have a form of godliness come to church every Sunday morning, but live like the devil Monday through Saturday night. Never coming to the truth. I can stand up here and preach it all day long. But if you don't have the heart knowledge, if you don't listen, if you don't Take it to heart. It doesn't do any good. Deprived mind means that they rejected faith. Roman Empire. Corruption. Other countries. Corruption. America. We are becoming one of the most corrupt nations in the world. It's not this week's message. But over and over and over this week they've talked about the abortion bill. It's bad enough that they're aborting, but now they're killing ba they want to kill babies out of the womb. Think about it. They're already in some regards in our social system on adults recommending ending life because of the government having to pay for it. Think about it. It all starts with turning our back on God. If you're a God-fearing nation, if you're a God-fearing people, you're not going to go for that stuff. But if you're a pew sitter, if, if you're a preacher that doesn't believe all the Bible, you'll accept anything. Roman Empire, how did they start out? The greatest nation of its time. The Roman Empire. How'd they start out? Decline in morality. This is on the internet if you want to look it up. Decline in fertility rate. The rise in pedophilia. Unchecked debauchery. Sexual pleasures. Denying who God was. Corrupt leaders. Politicians. Violent entertainment. One of my favorite shows, and I'm having to get away from it. I've already got away from wrestling, as Miff has called it, wrestling. I've already got away from that. But I love to watch the Spartacus movies. Okay? Do you know how violent they are? How bloodthirsty they are? I've got to quit watching them. Because it's real easy for my sensuality to change because there's also sex in those. Okay? Denying who God is. Uh, I already said that. <laughs> A welfare state. Is America in some regards a welfare state today? 45% are supporting... 55% of the world, or 55, I can say the world, can't I? That's where America's gone. Loss of common language. 
if you get stuff from Social Security, they send things in five or six different languages. If you go to Walmart, they got things in English and Spanish, maybe some others. Loss of language. And the last one, I'm not going to beat up this, but open borders. Open borders was one of Rome's problems. The only way failure happens is if we choose to let it. We turn our back on God. We serve a God that can take our defeats and bring glory to His name. But we forget. Last slide. Every knee shall bow. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall praise, give praise to God. God's still ultimately in control. He still lets us have free will. I still know people that call themselves Christians that don't darken the doors of the church. You do too. It's time to stand up for Christ and be counted. It's time to live the life that is different, pleasing and acceptable to Him. Can you? Will you? Will you commit to living for God, not only at church, but in the world, in the marketplace? It doesn't matter if you've been walking with Him faithfully or you've stumbled. We stumble. We make mistakes. If your life, stumble in your life, uh, God is encouraging you and to help you to work in His kingdom before it's too late. I don't think it's too late. I can be wrong. But I think, I believe, there's still enough Christians out there